a distinct and wonderful pleasure to introduce our guest speaker today. She is not a stranger to any of us who come here regularly. Ursula Tini has facilitated over 4,000 individual healing sessions and has worked with thousands more in groups. She helps to bring emotional, physical, and spiritual balance to her clients' lives through subconscious work. She is a licensed minister with Centers for Spiritual Living and a practitioner of internal family systems. So I'm just very pleased to welcome this morning wonderful Ursula. Thank you. Thank you. So today's talk is about merry-go-rounds. The merry-go-round. And it's not the merry-go-round in the fair, but the merry-go-round in the playground. And how many of you remember going around that thing? It's a metal disc with the handles on it, the railing on it, right? You remember riding on that thing? How many of us have gotten hurt on that? How many of us have gotten really hurt on that? So that's a common thing. And I remember when I was a kid, I would listen to this uh, recording of a comedian, and he was talking about Bill Cosby, and he was talking about in the hood that they would play in a vacant lot. And there'd be tires and broken bottles and bricks, and no one ever got hurt, and they had a great time. They would do wars and make up all kinds of imaginary games. And then the city planners decided that these children needed a playground, a proper playground, so they came in and cleaned the lot up and put in all of this equipment. And because these children were unfamiliar with it, they would get hurt. <laughs> so he would go on and talk about the ambulance would come to the playground because, you know, there'd be blood squirting out of this kid. And then the monkey bars, that was the thing that got everybody. Everyone thought they were big enough to do the monkey bars, and nope, they flattened. You'd be home eating lunch, and you'd hear the ambulance in the neighborhood, and you're like, oh, these monkey bars, they got another kid. <laughs> so it's kind of like that in life uh, when we go and make changes in our world and we try new things and we think that the inventions or something this model or this technique or this job or this relationship is going to be better than the one that we already have when if we settle down and do things very naturally and simply well that's another storyline so we always want to go for something bigger better more and that's kind of what this very go around theme is about because I was talking with a client and he said, why do I behave this way? You know, I just, I just don't understand. I said, well, it's like when we get on a merry-go-round and then we just take off and that's the only reality. So I remember distinctly at four, I was in the playground and uh, my mom and sister and everybody was there and I'm playing in the sandbox and I thought, you know, I'm, just, I'm big now. I'm not wearing those dopey girly dresses and I got my shorts on and my t-shirt little tennis shoes. I'm a big girl. And the, the days of cuddling with my teddy bear, little bunny rabbit, you know, those are history books. My, hanging on to my mom's leg for security. I don't need that anymore. So I remember wandering off the sandbox area playing with my little sister. I was going to go check out the big equipment. And I had my eye on the slide. So I was headed straight for the slide. And a weird thing happened. The closer I got to the slide, the bigger it got. <laughs> and we're in the world of metaphysics here in Center for, for Spiritual Living, but when we're a child and we're outside playing, we're meant to interact because we're still very much developing our physical, our brain, and we need to go outside and play. So just because we're not in the kangaroo pouch anymore doesn't mean we're, we're all done. Uh, so it's very important for children to play outside and to do things because they learn laws and principles. So the slide looked a little bit too intimidating, and I said, okay, what else is here that I can play with? And I saw the merry-go-round. So I wandered over there, and I seen other children play on it. So I grabbed one of the bars, and I started pushing the thing. And then there's a, there's a law right there, Newton's Law. Something in motion is harder to get started than it is to keep it in motion. So it's funny how we don't realize what we're learning when we're learning. And I was just pushing that thing. So I got it going and it started rotating and it kept the momentum. And I climbed up on it and I was learning balance and playing around with the rails. And then as I would go around, I saw this boy coming towards me. I'm like, oh, I better get off. So I started wandering towards the edge to get off. And the kid goes, oh, stay on, I'll push you. 
And see, I didn't realize how like eight-year-old boys are. Because <laughs> I'm a little four-year-old girl. And my boy cousins knew to play nicely with me, otherwise they would get a baby. So this, this boy came, and if it was a girl, she would be like, oh, hi, can I push you? And we'd have a nice little cute time. And he's like, I got you. But see, in the eight-year-old mentality, they're tired now. They're, they're, they're done, all right? Too many rules, too many structures. And if they could, they would say, woman, speaking to their mother, woman, if, if you give me one more rule, one more, you can't do this, and go to bed, and, and, and you know, pick up your room, and don't split, hit your sister, and this, like, I'm done. I'm done, I'm done with that. I need to be bold, I need to play, I need to break something, I need to show my power. I'm mad. So I don't know this about this eight-year-old kid, so he's approaching this thing, oh, I'll push you. So I don't know what it is about our human nature that, you know, there's a destructive kind of aggressive thing. We just, we just want to see, we're just pretending, we just want to figure things out. So at the, this moment, I knew the little merry-go-round enough to know to go to the center. So I went to the center and I sat down and I hung onto the pole. Now, adults are making the pole, so the pole is this big. It should be this big, but it's this big. So I'm realizing maybe I'm too small to be on this ride. So he starts, and he starts moving the thing and moving the thing, and get going. And I'm spinning, and I'm spinning, and it's too fast for me. And I'm not feeling comfortable at all. And, and I don't know how to like say, okay, stop. And I don't think that that's gonna work anyway. So I'm just hanging out for dear life and wondering what's gonna happen. And my little hands are slipping away from the pole. So I do the elbow lock and that's slipping away. The bottom of my body is starting to move all by itself from the ventricle force, force from the ventricle force, oh, <laughs> from the force of motion pulling it away as if it was grabbing my spine and pulling, pulling, pulling. So, and, and it's lost. All control is lost. The outside world doesn't exist. I'm just in this sickening feeling and things are not looking well at all. And this boy doesn't also realize the law because I'm going around and around and around and Newton's law is <laughs> you can stay in motion until a greater uh, force or something greater or equal to the, it stops. So I kind of crashed into this kid's legs and he didn't realize that that was gonna happen. And then I fell down, he fell down. I was sliding in the dirt, face in the dirt, just wondering like, oh no. He got up laughing and ran away. <laughs> Have you ever been at that moment in life where you're just wondering like, wait a minute, what just happened? And this happens when we get a diagnosis. <clears throat> This happens when our spouse announces a divorce. This happens bankruptcy, car wrecks, DUIs. So this is the kind of place in life where we're like, oh my God, how did this happen? How did I get here? Because when we get on a merry-go-round in life, it's a vortex and that's the only thing we know. We're just in it. So we could go into a job and the job can be like, okay, we need you here. You just did the deal. We just work and work and work. And we forget about our family. We forget about self-care. We forget about spirituality. We're in this vortex and we don't even realize it. We also can get in a vortex of worry or obsessive, compulsive, or money. And then we just get in there and it takes us over and we don't know how to get out. So family members are like, hey, what's going on in there? Like, hey, we need more time with you. And, and we're like, what? I can't hear you, what? Yeah, yeah. Because we're in a vortex. Another um, funny story is when I was kind of figuring out some things about this talk, I was looking online for some information and I saw a video. And it was three men, grown men, sitting in the middle of one of these merry-go-rounds, all cuddled down, punched down, and they had motorcycle helmets on their head. I was like, what is this craziness? So I clicked it open, and the full screen revealed another guy on the outside of the disc with his moped and the rear tire against the rim of the disc. And he was hitting the throttle. And I'm like, oh no. 
So the motorcycle tire was causing this, this to spin and the three men in the middle were spinning. I'm like, what? Why do men do things like this? Why do the women would never do in this situation? You wouldn't see this. So I'm watching and then the motorcycle noise was quite noisy. And then I hear, Helmets in the middle of the circle was waving outwardly, and then and then his head was bobbing out further and further, and his body was starting to slide and slip. And I'm like, oh yes, I know this. <laughs> the four-year-old inside of me was like, I remember that. I grew up with that law. So I could see there was several minutes left to the video, and I thought, oh no, I am not going to be party to this nonsense. And I know that the guy who's doing the video was also a male. And there's just like all these men around. Had a woman been in the scene of that, she would have gone over and gone to the motorcycle guy and said, hey, this is not gonna end well. Please, like, just, just cut this off. And he would have not heard her because his little merry-go-round was going in his head. <laughs> he was just watching because he knew this was an exciting thing. He didn't plan, like, the injury and what's going to happen. No, he just got caught in his merry-go-round in his head. The video videographer. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's in this little vortex. So I didn't want to watch the rest of this thing play out at all. So I scan down to some of the comments and I see foot, wheel, too bad. And I thought, no, no, the man, the, the man his full body kind of crashed into the motorcycle just like I crashed into the boy. So when we're understanding that life is kind of weird and we need to be in a place of awareness before we get on these tasks in life or these objects or these ways of being or this new idea that we have, this new invention to improve our lives or make things better. Uh, another thing that it came to me when I was around the spinning thing is I was in Peru many years later and um, exploring a ruin. This was before all the things got roped off. So I was there and I was on a cliff and I saw some area down below. So I crawled down there and climbed down there and, and was there and I was feeling the space. Because as a spiritual person, I like to experience things. That's why I would get on things like the merry-go-round. But so I was experiencing the place and feeling the energy of it. And it was very different. Something was different about it. And I just allowed that feeling to happen. And this started happening like this. Wow. Look where you touch. And I just got turning. And it felt really neat. And my friend who was with me, who's more normal than I am, <laughs> he said, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> And I just kept spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. And then when we got back stateside, we researched it. You know, was there something that's spinning? And we looked at and found the uh, five Tibetans and they talked about spinning and they said, you know, start small, seven, 14, but no more than 21. So I said, okay, so I started spinning and I would do 21 spins. And then at the end, you have to kind of counterclockwise because you get a little dizzy. And do you remember as children, we would spin we would just go into the grass and just spin and spin and spin and how much fun it was. And then we'd fall down because we were so dizzy and it was just hilarious. We would just laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. And then we'd tell our other little friends like, do the spinning thing, it's so much fun. And then you'd have five kids spinning on the lawn and it was just fantastic. So in the research I did, we, I found out that as children were developing, so that's a normal thing internationally we do that we just spin and spin and spin around. And it's to help equalize the equilibrium and our balance and our association and perception and all of that. But when we're adults, everything kind of gets concretized and it makes us sick to spin. So maybe we drink so much and then the room's spinning. It's not so funny then. <laughs> but when we're a little kid, it's, it's hilarious. So maybe there's something natural about us spinning and us changing our reality. Because when we spin, everything on the outside goes away and we are just what's in the inside. 
So when it's bad, it's really bad. But when it's good, it can be very lovely. So my the guy I was dating, he started spinning too. So we, we spanned for months. It was really wonderful. And I found out that when you spin counterclockwise, it's releasing energy. So just like the hose bed, uh, Lucy, lefty Lucy, righty tighty. So when we spin clockwise, it energizes us, it lifts us. In the States, our merry-go-rounds are counterclockwise because we're all hyper kids and have a lot of sugar and stress and everything. So it's better for us to spin counterclockwise. And in England, if you notice, they don't really, those children over there, you never see them that they have a tan. So I don't know, do they not go outside? Is it that rainy? So in England, their uh, merry-go-rounds are clockwise. So that gives them more energy and then we need to dispel our energy because we have too much of it. So if you want to try that cl uh, clockwise thing, counterclockwise, uh, it would, might be a nice experiment for you to do. Then later in life, I got involved in Sufi. So I started teach, uh, learning from my teacher, um, Adnan Sahan, and he's a very wise and, and learned man, and we would get to this whirling thing. So by the time they whirl, We've done a lot of other spiritual practices to get us to this point of really experiencing totality of what was available to us. We would do the chanting and the breathing and the movement and resting and or meditation, and then we get up to that point. And it's very lovely. They have they put their right hand to the sky and their left hand to the earth, and they just get going. And there's music involved, so there's momentum in and an energy that kind of penetrates us because we're wide, wide open. So in this vortex, a speed gets set and everything just becomes color. There's no more shapes. So the carpets are color, the chairs are a color, the walls are a color, other people are color, and it's just beautiful. It's bands of color. And instead of going outward, we go inward and kind of center and we become nothing. You're no longer the person because there's no thoughts because the thought <laughs> it's too crazy in there so the thoughts go away it's another form of meditation so this is a connectedness that we can achieve as well so when we go through life we're not aware of all these levels of laws and experiences what's available to us so it's for us to ask ourselves what merry-go-round am i on Am I, am I running an addiction? Am I running a worry? Does my family, we always have these patterns and my whole family's on this giant merry-go-round. What merry-go-round am I on? What merry-go-round do I want to be on? And how about if I just took a break and said no to all merry-go-rounds? What if I was the child who just walks through the playground and doesn't get distracted by this one and that one and the scary slide and the other kids that are too big for me to play with. What can I do to center myself and to be clean and clear from the merry-go-rounds? So one thing that we could do is ask people that we have trusted relationships with. So you don't want to ask your posse. You don't want to ask the other people that are on that same merry-go-round with you. Blind camp, give me, I'm on a merry-go-round. No, no, you're not on a merry-go-round, you're fine. Here, give, give me some of that. Because if we ask our playmates, then they're just going to support us. So if we ask family members, you know, hey, I heard this talk, merry-go-round. You know, what are you noticing about my merry-go-round? And they're like, wow, are you sure you want to know? And so it's good. It's good for us to hear about these things because they're on, we're on such autopilot all the time that we don't realize the games we're playing on ourselves. We don't realize the traps that we're in, the vortexes that we're just sucked into, that have taken us over, and we're, we've left choice out of our equation. And as you know, you can't just stop a merry-go-round, the crashing what happened within the merry-go-round. So just like it speeds up, it needs time to slow down. So when we're in a relationship that's getting worse and worse and worse and worse, we can't just drop out. We need to slow it down, recognize things, talk about it, move away, you know, 
go through a process of slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, and regrouping. And it's the same, you know, if we want to change our eating habits, or if we want to bring in a new exercise routine. We start slow and build and build and build, and then we can manage things. So this is a time for us to just be aware of what we're doing, who we're doing it with, why we're doing it. Wouldn't that be an interesting question? Why am I doing this? So all day long, kind of asking, checking in, why am I doing this? Is this a routine that I'm on all the time? Or is this serving me? Is this not serving me? Am I wasting time? Is this valuable to me? So in the spiritual path, it's about awareness, always. How aware can we be? And what level of consciousness are we on at any given time? So raising our consciousness, raising our vibration is kind of what we're all about. And it's through awareness, it's through sharing, it's through connecting. So let's review. Stay away from the eight-year-olds in life. Because even that kid with, with the, the man with the moped, he was acting like the eight-year-old. And when, when am I being an eight-year-old? When am I being too aggressive towards myself or towards other people? And doing things in a way that's natural. Like not reaching and getting on every ride that, that's coming along just because it's there. With, with those men in the motorcycle. Just because they could doesn't mean we should. How fun is it if it's at a cost? Like when we buy something that's too expensive and now we're in a mortgage that's over our head and we stress ourselves out. Like why do, we, why do we do stuff like that? So it's just all this evaluation and recognizing ourselves, our family mat, uh, patterns, and the people around us who we're hanging out with. Because we really do influence one another. Instinctually, I knew get off of that ride because the big kid's coming. So we have this instinct. So it's to listen to our instinct. Our instinct is our first mind. It will, it will not let us down. It's our animal, human, evolutionary process that has got us here. Instead of us, you know, killing ourselves by the time, you know, 2019 rolls around. So we, we have a built-in mechanism of our intuition that we can use, our instinct that we can use, and our intuition to, to go ahead and spiral, even though it didn't make any sense in Peru. And then here it is, years later, I'm doing Sufi, practices and it's really feeding my soul. It's, it's about listening and exploring and being on a playground in life and understanding who we are and why we're here. So I just wanted to share all of this with you, these thoughts and feelings and ideas and concepts, because our self-awareness is what's going to get us through any problem. So thank you. Thank you. 
suffer from passion, the time he gets long off, face in the dirt, thinking about bunny rabbits and teddy bears and where's my mommy. That's inside. Feeling so grateful for his teachings. 